Yeah, I don't know why he's missing. But that's a problem for the next video. For you, for me, I'm segueing out of one directly into the other. So there's that. <laughs> well, here we are for the Ramba Garma Trojan Horse Pursuit Ramba Route. These are going to get really complicated. I am actually running out of characters in the YouTube videos to name these things. Doesn't help that I have to open with Mobile Suit Gundam Gundam versus Zeta Gundam. So. Let's go fighting. Well, act it wouldn't be canon to use a goof there. Suppose I haven't run a Zaku one. Let's, let's have some fun with that, maybe. You'll notice the Zaku one doesn't have the pipes. Uh, on the helmet, wrapping around the chest, or at the legs. Unless you didn't notice, because you have no attention to detail. It also doesn't have the shoulder armor on the right shoulder of the Zaku 2. In fact, it doesn't even have the Heat Hawk, the axe, you kickbox in this thing. This is the one mobile suit where you can say, in all honesty, you're going to punch somebody's lights out. I am not meleeing the Gundam in a Zaku 1. I am out. Oh, he's got the Gundam hammer! No! No, distance, distance, distance. Fly, 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 fly. At least he can hit me with a beam rifle. I missed the jump. Well, it's about time I had mobile suit back up. What the hell is this? And of course, the Gundam ground types are all equipped with 180mm anti-mobile suit sniper cannons. Because of course they are. I'm just body slamming the Gundam in a Zaku one. Oh, he's targeting me. Oh! Feel of it. Oh, God. Defensive spin that. Well, at least that was straightforward. What are you looking at? <laughs> what are you looking at, Zaku One? Trojan horse has been caught. Oh boy. We have to go assault. This is the one where we have to destroy two of them before the ship flies off. Luckily, I'm not doing it in Azaku this time. Wait a minute, were you? was dead at... No, he wasn't. Well, I mean, we're not canon anyway. Why am I thinking about it so much? Oh, ho, ho, ho. no, you don't. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah, you want some? Come get it. Come get it. I'm gonna goof. Do you know how good I am with this thing? I'm so good that my friends refuse to play me in this game if I was using it. That's how good I am in this thing. Yeah? You want some? 
Oh yeah! Come on! Bring it! Oh, you done fucked up now. And this is why everybody refused to play with me if I was using a goof. Get up. Ow, that hurt me so much. Come on, show me something special. Mm, too late. You done goofed. Amen. We're going back to base. Back the Trojan horse and the Takalamaka. <laughs> it's a word, apparently. <laughs> I mean, like even the Hyzak looks like a like a war machine, as opposed to these. Heroic, you know, must appear heroic to make the models sell. God, I've seen Gundam models when the show first came out before they had, like, the more sophisticated plastics molding technology and rapid prototyping. God, they look like shit. Almost no flexibility either. Like, oh man, they were just bad. Thing is, back then, a lot of the modelers were kids who, like, probably were neither interested in nor could handle anything more sophisticated. Now a lot of those model builders are grown-ass men who take a great deal of time and effort and pride in their model building skills. I don't. I got nub marks. I didn't get sandpaper before I got it. I, uh, I didn't get the right kind of clips to get the plastic off the sprues. My models look nasty. <laughs> I didn't use any stickers, I didn't paint anything, I didn't even pan a line. My models are an affront to model makers everywhere! <sighs> hey, I'm a Gundam fanboy and I wanted a Gundam model, so shut the fuck up. I wasn't trying to make some super model that looks like it literally just stepped off of a battlefield in miniature form and whatever. I'm really upset, though, that, uh, they ran out of stock from one of the models I was going to get. Like, completely. It was just gone. I was going to get the, um, RGZ-95 Rezel in, uh, the General Revel G Defensor A and B type configuration. Which, if you're unfamiliar with Gundam Unicorn, you probably don't have the slightest idea what I'm fucking talking about. God's sakes, I... We know Recover doesn't work for this match. The Gundam's just... He's keeping me at arm's length. And I can't do what I need to do with this mobile suit if I can't close the gap, lose the shield. Oh my god. Thanks for that, Zaku. Thanks for that, Zaku. Gotta end this now. One, two more hits is the most... There we go. So yeah, the G-Defensive version of the Rezel was a assault variant, and it's important to note the Rezel is space use only, so its absurdly sized backpack is not... Um, it's ne it was never intended to really stand on solid ground under a full G. And the A and B variant allows you to reconfigure the Rezel for the A and B variant, and it's just... It's huge, and it looks great. It's awesome. Actually, so I don't sound potentially like a crazy person. I'm going to roll in a picture of what I'm talking about. And that should have happened. You know what, this time we'll use the DOM. So yeah, um, 
I was going to get that, and then it's like, oh, we're sorry, but we're out of stock. You could get this instead. And I was tempted to get the Delta Plus, and then it's like, oh, we're out of stock of that, too. And it's like, you don't have what I want! Yes, the Dom doesn't have much weapons flexibility, because it's literally what you see is what you get, which is technically the same story for the Goof. But, I mean, the Dom's rocket launcher can be intercepted by enemy projectiles. And the Dom is still pre-beam saber for Zeon, because this is actually a variant of heat weapon, like the Zaku and the Goof use. Are you... where is this piece of shit going. There we go. But yeah, you can see that the sword actually has a full shaft, it's just that it turns blue when it's superheated to its intended armored mobile suit cutting temperature. Thank you. Be oh god, we're fighting Sayla again? Really? Oh, she's in the G-Fighter, not the gun this time. Well, at least she's sticking to her area. There's no way I hit her with rockets. Not a chance. Oh, that connected for hardly any damage whatsoever. The one thing with the Dom is that the rocket ammunition recovery is extremely quick. And scattering thing. I still don't know what that's supposed to be for. There we go. I think, is this the first time I've actually used a Dom in this Let's Play? Probably. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm not even a huge fan of the Rick Diaz. Part of it's because the Dom was kind of what destroyed the goof, and I really liked the goof. Sort of the reason why I didn't watch Peter Jackson's King Kong for the longest time, because he was going to do an Evangelion project until Kong opened up, and suddenly that project got shelved for the foreseeable future, and I was like, God damn it, Kong. Besides, I like Skull Island better anyway. Nothing like getting a bit a bit of Kong in your Vietnam, yeah. Uh, repel an all-out assault in the Federation. Bob, 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 Bob. But we're going back to the goof. I mean, this is what I mean. Like, this is basically the Garma route that I did with Ramba Lives, only I'm playing as Ramba instead of Garma. Which is why I need to space these things out and intercut them with other things, because otherwise it's just the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, how about that friendly fire, huh? Yeah! Oh, for God's sakes. Gotta deal with those turrets first. Yeah, how about that friendly fire, huh? Come on. Take out the turret. Take out the turret. Why is this not... There we go.
There we go. Ah! God damn it. What? Yeah, your big tank buddy's completely, oh, well, almost completely neutered. Uh, these are two fixed forward firing guns. They can still hit me and they cannot be destroyed. Still, because the big tray isn't moving, they can't actually aim. So as long as I don't park myself right in front of its guns, we're fine. We're good. Ow. Oh, for God's sakes. Why is Garma piloting an Adzam anyway? That's technically not even a mobile armor, because it, quote, predates the mobile armor concept. Yeah, well, by my definition of mobile armor, if it's being powered by a Minovsky Ultra Compact Fusion Reactor, which, considering it uses the Minovsky Lightcraft system to fly, seems likely, then it's a fucking mobile armor. I don't care whether they named it yet. I don't care that it looks like a giant Hershey's Kiss with legs. It's a mobile armor. Get over yourself. Oh, we got a Zagok. Oh, it's a standard Zagok. It's not the Shar Custom version. Um, we're not in Jaburo yet. I'm going to keep using the goof. Can you tell that I really like this mobile suit? The Goof Custom made improvements. I can't say I'm enthusiastic about losing the heat rod for the heat wire. Which is a misnomer, too, because it can no longer damage enemies thermally. It's purely an electrical weapon at that point. I'd have to say that if I was, like, picking a version of the Goof to pilot, it would probably be the Goof Ignited from Gundam Seed Destiny, because A, it can basically fly. It has two heat rods, two quad-barreled beam machine guns, and instead of a heat sword, it actually has a anti-ship beam saber. Although if I was piloting a custom version, I would swap the flight pack that was equipped to it for the slash Zaku pack. That way I could have an anti-ship beam sword and a gigantic beam halberd. Because <laughs> if you're going to go melee, then you, gotta, you better go melee hard, you know? It's a put up or shut up moment, right? Ow. I mean god, when I did when I did Titanfall 2 multiplayer and I did not do much of it, I was mostly playing Ronin because nobody else had the balls to get right up in the enemy's face and just be like that hyper aggressive. <laughs> Mind you, we were running co-op, not competitive, so I probably would have gone for Tone if it was competitive, but that's only because Tome is kind Tone is kind of broken. Like, especially with the right uh, things installed. Like, Tone is a force of utter destruction. Oh, that shot kind of snuck up on me, didn't it? Yeah. So yes, my plan, such that it was, was to further decrease game audio and then boost the voice and sound effects audio so that the interference would make the bots less likely to just shut all my shit down. Um, so I've decreased the game audio, but I haven't increased the the sound effects and voice audio to compensate. So I'm probably still going to have bots telling me that I have copyrighted material. And none of it, none of it is copyright strike worthy, but the problem with the DMCA is that the owner of the material could at any point decide it's strike worthy. And then basically if I have it on a bunch of my videos, they all get striked at the same time and I have huge problems. Especially considering how the whole, like, Google YouTube ban thing works. Like, people getting shut off from their fucking email. Thanks, Google, for being a bunch of corporate shitheels. And sponsoring my hosting of these videos, because it's not like I'm paying for it. 
Invade the interior. Okay, here's where we bust out the Zagok. We gotta protect Garma again. This mission always turns out to be a chore, and it's not helped by the fact now. Oh, hey, look, the Ashamar, the flying donut. It's not helped by the fact now that we're not using a Shar custom Zagok. This is just a regular Zagok. So we're a bit slower, a bit less powerful. We're just not as finely tuned to the melting point. I can imagine how finely tuned Char's mobile suit is, that it needs almost constant maintenance. Because it basically would burn itself out every few missions. Alright, you can, you can already tell that I'm not doing as much damage. Although before we were fighting more gyms. Not the gym ground type, which is half decent. The gym ground type has more in common with it, the Gundam it was based off of, the ground combat Gundam, than the actual space gym, the regular gym. He's piling a gun cannon. Interesting. This could be different. It could also still end very badly. I shouldn't let my guard down. Get some! Yeah! Hey, yeah! Oh! Nope! Nope! Everybody gang up on Sayla! She's in the gun cannon, she can't fight that well up close. Hey, I was meleeing too. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ow. Oh, there goes the recover, used by another no-name Akai pilot. Thanks for that. You know, the Akais are very, um, fragile. So, okay, since I'm speaking about the Akai, and I've mentioned them before how much I like uh, the Thunderbolt Bandit Flower, like, Akai variants. The Akai was not designed to be a stealth mobile suit. It was just part of many experiments done by Xeon in the name of amphibious mobile suit development. The thing was, Akai has such a low heat signature and power signature because it's underpowered, essentially that under the effect of Minofsky par particles, it's basically undetectable. So they accidentally invented a stealth MS. And then it got heavily used during this Jaburo raid, and during the attempt to recover whatever it was in Gundam Thunderbolt. Like I said, they had a bunch of variants in that one. Dion's uh, amphibious MS always have, like, interesting, wacky designs. I mean, think about it, this mobile suit does not have a head. It, it's a torso, with the mono-eye camera just kind of spooling around the torso. I figured he was going to go for a melee rush. You want some? Come get some! He got pincered by pincers. That's one thing that's not well reflected in this game. You really can't use beam sabers or even beam weapons for that matter underwater because the water just absorbs and disperses the beam energy, rendering the weapon effectively worthless. Which is why amphibious mobile suits have huge claws, because you can't really use heat weapons underwater either, because again, the water absorbs the heat and renders the whole thing worth pointless. Like, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> And now we're in a regular Gelgoog. See, once the big Samus mass produced, look ahead to the Federation 
I, honestly, I would still be using the goof if I had the option, but it's ground only. Oh, hey, Armoro. You missed. Ah, so did I. I can already feel the... Oh, that, that Gundam's getting a bit pushy. Yeah, let's not. How did that miss? Oh. Oh, I don't want to be right in front of the big zam. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh! I'm glad I'm not the only one getting friendly fired. It's not where I want to be. Hey! Oh! Oh! oh, 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 oh hi Ow! No. No. Come here. Come here. Ow! Say no until it's over, Armor. Oh, God. Why did you have to come down here, Dozel? Why? I don't. I can't fight him if I'm at risk of getting stomped on by your giant claw feet. Okay, well, we have to destroy Slager at some point. It's a mission condition. Ah, there we go. Now we just have to deal with the Gundam. Ugh. Hackens. Ow! That was friendly fire. Thanks for that, Dozel. Come on, you can do better than that, can't you, Gundam? Can't you, Gundam? Huh? Huh? Uh, then again, maybe not. Now, this will answer the question whether or not that unlocks Dozel joins Garma's thing. Hey! Great, I just had to play a whole other character route to unlock. No, no. Wait. No, I think I know. Ah, yes, I have to, like, play through his route, and that will... Oh, for fuck's sakes. Can anything be d direct and simple, but no? That's that's not gonna go over well. Mm. Fine, then. Fine, 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 fine. We'll make it work. I can't even use the Dom here, because you need the Rick Dom for use in outer space. Yeah. Because they're, they're different. One has jets, one has rockets. It matters! Uh, yeah, whatever. I'm phoning it in at this point, because it's just like... Oh, I'm not looking forward to the editing this is going to take. Yes, the wind whipping against my face. That's what war's about. Alright, I'm assuming the Gundam's gonna show up at some point. It would have to, I imagine. Oh, the gun tank instead. Well, that thing's already dead. Wow, great shot there, man. Hayato, if I recall, was even younger than Kai in armor. Like, he was, like, 13-whatever when this was going on. Ah, 
And now he exploded. No, not the balls. Not the balls! Oh. Ugh. Oh, for fuck's sake! I just want my attacks to hit! But this is all auto-aim. There's no manual. And it doesn't lead! I mean, for God's sakes, in armored, even in armored core, they lead the shots, depending on the quality of your fire control system. They kind of have to, though, because they really screwed the pooch with armored core's controls. Like, vertical pitch aiming is handled by the shoulder buttons? Are you actually fucking serious? And you can't remap it to the sticks, either. You can't have actual stick aim. It won't let you do it in the early armored cores. It wasn't until 4 that they, you know, I think went with stick aim, and it's like... It's about fucking time. Come get it, come get it, come get it. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. So yes, I'm going to give all of you a sort of an idea about what's happening behind the curtain. Because these missions are so samey, they are going to be intercut with missions from the Eug route. But I also don't have the hard drive space to store all of this, which means that I'm going to have to edit them to video context, upload them to YouTube, and then schedule their actual release so that you get something in between. Ow. God, the best way to do it, though, would be to toggle between Aug, Titans, and Zeon here. The problem with that means I have to do Jared Mace's route. And I really, really don't want to do Jared Mace's route. Common, we're going back to base. I just don't. I mean, I know I'm going to have to. He's the main character in the Titans route. Inheritors, that's a that's a way of putting it, I suppose. Like, Xeon at least had some purpose in the One Year War. After that, they were just kind of being petty and vengeful. Space Noid superiority, all that garbage. And it's literally straight into the exact same mission, just with Dozel instead. I mean, don't get me wrong, Federation vs. Eon Deluxe, and by extension, I would assume, Aug vs. Titans, had a lot of samey missions, because there aren't a lot of map locations, there aren't a lot of, like, objective types, there's only so many different, like, variations you can mix of the material that was available. So it all got samey at one point, but then again, I don't think this game was intended for anyone other than Gundam fans. Then again, I suppose the same thing could be said of Gundam Extreme versus Full Boost. And it's Hayato again, and he's in the gun tank again. Between you and the Namekian, I think I've lost my touch at genocide. God, that whole sequence, because, like, my first exposure to uh, Team Four Star's uh, Dragon Ball Z Abridged was the compilations, like, the character compilations that were done by other people. Um, <laughs> and that whole bit where... Um, oh, God, it's been so long since I've seen... I used to be able to do impressions of a lot of the voices, but it's been so long since I've seen it, like, I'm at a bit of a loss... Vegeta! Did Freezer do this to you? Oh, look at that, Vegeta. You seem to have made a friend. I hate you! 
I hate you both. Well, Vegeta and I were having a slight disagreement. He wanted himself to live, and I didn't. Why do you want to die? No, I meant that I want him to die. Is it because you look weird? What? Oh, you got those purple lips, and that those weird ears, and that nose. <laughs> now, the real fun part is, like, the heroic lines that... Frieza has heard a certain number of times, then Goku shows up. Are you that Freezer guy? I am Lord Freezer. yes. Great, I'm a Deku in the schnoz. That's a new one. Who and what are you? My name is Goku. I'm insane. From Earth. Turns to Vegeta. Ugh, he means a Saiyan. Uh, between you and the Namekian, I think I've lost my touch of genocide. And that segued into the rest of that scene. Yeah, my impressions are way off. Not that this microphone, considering it's a sh it's a shitty headset mic, captures my voice all that well in the first place. And this battle turned into me talking about Dragon Ball Z instead of Mobile Suit Gundam. And there we have it. Ramba's Rawl for Escape 2 Axis. That will unlock Endozel's route once we've done his end down here. And then that'll unlock Engarma's route. And once you have an only, if I recall, once you have all three, do you get uh, the route for Haman? Yeah. Haha. <laughs> 